you a couple of things that Maraj made. Um, he mentioned uh, why is there so many excess? I'm not going to blame it on um, the 1033 program because the 1033 program only deals with the excess equipments that are already made. They're not manufacturing weapons for the 1033 program. Um, and concerning the baby boo boo, um, how there was a grenade, the affirmative didn't mention why they even went inside uh, the house or even threw the grenade in the house. Um, I'm sure they didn't just go like, hey, here's a grenade, let's just throw it in the apartment or something. Um, in these instances, it's basically all about policy and procedure. Now, um, to uh, further my partner's claim um, about how the majority of um, material and equipment um, obtained from the program, um, they're not all weaponry. Um, according to the Honorable um, Claire McCaskill, she mentioned um, in the Congressional <coughs> Digest that overall, approximately 96% of the property provided to law enforcement agencies has been non-controlled property. So like Jared had mentioned earlier, um, this can include anything from commercial vehicles, office furniture and supplies, generators, tents, tarps, toolkits, first aid kits, blankets, safety glasses, hand tools, um, storage containers, lockers, shelving, and forklifts, um, or even vehicle maintenance. Um, and only approximately 4% of the property provided by the program is controlled, which is um, the actual like MRAPs or uh, military design equipment um, themselves. Um, um, now, these, uh, the 4% of the military weapons can include um, protection, not just um, offensing um, the citizens. So she also mentioned that um, there were a couple instances um, like in Texas where armored vehicles were seen through the program protect the police officers during a standoff and shootout with a gang member. Um, she also mentioned that during a 2013 flood in Louisiana, um, Livingston Parish Police used six HMMV WVs to rescue 137 people. So it can also be used in natural disasters as well um, because sometimes the equipment already um, are available, they're just not good enough and they don't provide enough security for police officers to go out there and do their job. Um, also, um, uh, in an article by Police One, uh, W. James reported that um, there was a North Hollywood shootout in 1997 in LA and um, this was a poster case in showing the need for such vehicles, such as the MRAP. So um, the situation was about two robbery suspects uh, and they had an automatic assault weapons and they were covered with bullet resistant clothing and helmets um, which are easily um, accessible or you can buy that anywhere, not just police, um, police don't have access to it. Um, and they fired several hundred rounds at civilians and officers, wounding several in the process. Um, so that's an example of where these um, equipment from the 10th grade 1033 program would serve as um, efficient. Um, um, additionally, the New York Times also reported that Kevin E. Wilkinson, um, a police chief, he said that he wished that the um, right now it would be the way that it was when he was a kid. However, he did um, he did mention that there is a possibility of violence, uh, no matter how remote. It also requires taking precautions. He quoted, um, "We're not going." We're not going to go out there as officer friendly with no body armor and just a handgun and say it's just good enough because it's really not anymore. There's plenty of threats, just like the last debate, um, how there's like school shootings, 9/11. Um, uh, there's plenty of incidents, um, even in peaceful protests, where sometimes it might not end up being peaceful, and it couldn't. It might be the police officers themselves, but it's not just the weaponry obtained from the 1030 program. This is um, a more deeply rooted factor um, to the problem. Um, and basically the 1033 program is just making uh, the best use of what they have. Um, they're not manufacturing any more weapons for it or anything. Thank you.